Okay. Uh, please mute yourself when you if you opened uh, YouTube as well. You have to be muted because otherwise the that we can hear the the sound from from the Zoom. So, um, but you can show me if if you see on YouTube uh, if it works on YouTube. Anyone watching YouTube? Yeah, it works. Cool. Cool. It's like 60 seconds later than we are here. So uh, watching both streams would be a bit annoying. So don't do that. But Diana, will you let people in from from now on, please? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I don't do that uh, any more. Don't worry about that. All right. Okay, so, but can you see people? We, we have to let them in, uh, Diana. Okay, okay, good. All right, it's four o'clock uh, already. So I guess it's time uh, to start the uh, demo day today. So, sorry for, um, Diana, can you see that? The root coming Zoom? Don't know what that. Yes, I think I don't. I don't want to admit that. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. Ula, don't worry. Just continue with the event. All right. So, uh, sorry, guys, and let me start with the uh, event. So, uh, great to have you all uh, here. Mm, hello and uh, welcome on the demo day of the 10th batch of the Reactor X uh, Accelerator. Uh, my name is Ola starakiewicz Krawczyk and uh, I'm a head of acceleration and I'm going to be uh, your host today. So uh, we are meeting on Zoom, but there is a live streaming on YouTube as well. So um, welcome everyone and thank you for uh, joining us. And, uh, and I hope that you're going to uh, enjoy the uh, event. So before we move to, uh, to what's actually uh, important, let me uh, tell you how the event is going to look like. So first, I will talk uh, briefly about the batch, uh, and then uh, and then we go to the uh, pitching contest. Uh, so uh, at the end of the pitching contest, uh, you will um, uh, there, there will be the uh, well, voting for the audience uh, awards. So make sure that you uh, look for the form. It will be in the in the uh, comments on YouTube uh, in the chat, uh, and then you can you can vote for the best speech. Um, then uh, during our jury, because that's the official contest. So we do have a jury, which I will introduce shortly. But during they will be discussing uh, who is the winner uh, this year. Um, we have some hot Racto X news to reveal. So uh, be with us. And then after the news, uh, we go to the uh, announcing uh, the winner uh, of this year um, batch. So talking about the uh, acceleration, it was really intense 10 weeks of acceleration. Nine startups uh, started, uh, ten, sorry, 10, start, 10 startups started the program. Uh, nine are going to pitch today. One of them uh, couldn't make it because the program was uh, too intense. 
we had 55 hours of workshops uh, and that's excluding all the statuses and organizational uh, meetings uh, and besides that we had seven prep pitching sessions which were uh, on which we invited uh, great mentors from VCs, uh, business angels, uh, uh, entrepreneurs so um, our startups got a lot of uh, valuable feedback and I guess they're really ready for, for the demo day today. And besides that, uh, our projects, uh, startups worked with uh, great lead mentors, uh, six lead mentors, uh, and there were more than 10 people um, sharing their uh, ad hoc mentoring uh, hours with our startups as well. So a lot of work, a lot of support, um, and our lead mentors this year, uh, it was Greg Albrecht, Peter Tuszynski, Michał Turski, Uldi Slaterc, Jakub Lewandowski, Cezary Dziugieł. Oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, thank you guys for, for your engagement and for working with uh, startups of, on the weekly basis. So but we couldn't make this program without our partners. Um, so Smog Ventures, uh, thank you, Diana Koziarska. Thank you, Boris Musielak, for all your support. Uh, it was great. And whenever I needed uh, help with reaching anyone from the network, they were uh, very helpful and always um, open and trying to, to find a solution for our uh, problems. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Legal Office, Narzek Mordaka. Uh, that's uh, thank you for giving workshops, but also for supporting all the legal uh, aspects of Reactor X. Um, and the same for Genprox, the accounting firm, um, also uh, having uh, workshops with us, but also supporting us in our operational uh, work. Um, so thank you for that. And all our startups uh, did great. Uh, progress during the program and uh, I guess they all can be very proud of themselves they should be proud of themselves I'm proud of them however that's a pitching contest so now let's see how others see uh, the projects and that's why we uh, invited uh, jury and we have three very experienced uh, members of the jury so please uh, meet Martina Piotrowska, a growth investor from uh, Unbound, from London. Uh, Michał Mroczkowski, an investment manager at Market One Capital, one of the most active uh, VC funds in Poland uh, and one of the most successful ones. And last but not least, uh, please meet Artur Banach, um, a managing partner in Movens VC, uh, as well, very uh, active VC in our region. Uh, they just got a, an award for a close cooperation with uh, business angels. So uh, thank you guys for being with us. Thank you for, for agreeing to, um, to give feedback and quick comments uh, to our startups. Uh, so about the rules of the uh, of the pitching today, uh, there is three minutes for each project uh, to pitch, and then we have around six minutes for Q uh, Q a session uh, with uh, our uh, jury members. So really short comments, uh, and at the end of the uh, of the session, which should take around ninety minutes. Um, there is going to be a voting for the um, audience award. So just remember to uh, vote. All right, and that's it for the moment. And I'm, uh, I have to stop sharing my screen, which is... Um, okay, here. Uh, okay, so now we move to the uh, first project. Uh, and the first one is donate wise. So good luck, guys, and the floor is yours. Fantastic, Ula. Thank you very much for the introduction. And hello, everyone. We are Donate Wise, the charity tool for e commerce. Now, first, I'd like you to think about the last time that you bought something online. Yeah? Maybe the product you were looking for was available in many online shops at the same price. So, how did you make your choice? 
Well, now imagine that one of these shops was supporting a charity that you recognize. That shop would donate 1% of your purchase to charity with no effort or extra cost from your end. Wouldn't the choice become obvious? Well, you wouldn't be alone. In the UK, there are 60 million customers spending 185 million euro on online purchases per day. And they are the customers who could make the same decision. And together we can make a difference. Sounds great, Piotr. But online shops are facing many problems when starting social activity. Well, partnering with a charity takes months and requires signing complicated contracts. Managing monthly donations takes valuable time of employees. On top of that, it is really difficult to effectively communicate social activity. So based on our seven years experience in e-commerce, we created DonateWise, a SaaS tool for e-commerce that enables donations to reputable charities. With DonateWise, online shops can easily partner with charity foundations. Sellers can integrate our tool with just a few clicks and automate the donation process. DonateWise helps to create a positive brand image, and most importantly, it increases sales in online shops. Our data shows a revenue uplift of 19% by implementing DonateWise. So how does it work? The online shop subscribes to DonateWise and selects a charity. Then DonateWise collects a fixed percentage of monthly sales and distributes the funds. What makes our solution unique is pre-screened charity partnerships, percentage of sales donations, and multiple integrations. Shopping Gifts in the US has raised $8 million in VC funding and serves almost half and one and a half thousand customers, which shows huge interest in e-commerce donations. A pricing model is monthly subscription plans that are based on the number of orders. Right. So, so far we have partnered with, partnered with reputable charities, we have built a functioning MVP and we have won our first paying customers. Now, by the end of this quarter, we want to close our seed round and continue scaling in Poland. We will start our UK expansion in quarter two. We are a team with international backgrounds and have successfully built e-commerce businesses. We have worked at VC-backed startups and digital enterprises in the UK and Germany. And Greg Albert has joined our team as our lead mentor recently. Now, we are looking to raise 500,000 euro, and this will allow us to reach the 23,000 MRR within the next 18 months. The donations are already flowing to our partners as we speak. Our initiative has been noticed and featured by prestigious publishers. We invite you to join the e-commerce revolution with us now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, perfect timing, Piotr. Um, thank you, and perfect pitch. OK. Uh, all right, so who would like to start uh, commenting? Uh, I can kick off. Uh, cool. Better. Jolly ringtone, uh, Ola. <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, thanks for the pitch. Uh, several questions, uh, but we'll start with the, the most basic ones. So, so the, how the product is distributed, uh, understand me, like allow me to understand whether this is some sort of you know, Shopify Presta plugin. If that's the case, how it's turned on by the e-commerce operator, and then uh, well, what's the what's the what's the flow on the user side? Uh, is the is the person is the buyer picking the organization, picking the the charity, or you you kind of run some sort of portfolio and you allocate um, you, you allocate the, the the amounts so the flow is is closer to to what you get when you I don't know, order from Zalando. Or, or whatever with the with the, with the carbon free delivery, right? Um, so yeah, if you could unpack this for me. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, so uh, let me try to make it quick. Uh, yes, we will also have plugins in order to integrate with the most popular platforms, but we can also integrate via API with uh, uh, some uh, platforms that are that are that are not. Uh, 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 very well known on the market. Um, the flow on the user side is, uh, is very simple. The user actually uh, makes a purchase the same way as he would do normally. We really do care um, about not uh, having any negative impact on the conversion rate. Uh, so we don't make any uh, more steps in the purchase process of the user. Um, the e-commerce store is actually um, dedicating part of the order amount to charity because it's a tool for the uh, e-commerce owner, the e-commerce store, um, and the price is exactly the same. So it's not on top, it's a percentage of the, um, of the purchase price. I don't know if that answered all of your questions. 
I think uh, there was a question about choosing the charity, and at the moment, as, as things stand, it's the it's the shop owners that that choose the charity. So in the V1 version of our product, this is how we're going to roll out. This brings the most value to our customers at present, but we have our product roadmap where we actually uh, included features such as selection of, of, of uh, charity foundations by potentially by customers or, or multiple charities by the shop owners. All right, thank you. I can be um, building on Michal's question. So how do I, as a customer, learn that the given e-commerce shop uh, contributes part of the transaction to the charity? Is it on the e-commerce store to tell me and you guys just do the integration? And the second question is why subscription versus transactional monetization model? Thanks. So for the first question, I think the simple answer is yes. Uh, uh, um, it's basically the, the donations are, are, are a part of uh, your, your margin. Um, so you as a shop owner cover that, yeah? I don't know if that answers your question. And uh, as for the pricing model and the business model in general, it's the simplest and most efficient form that we have chosen. And uh, for now, we're going to uh, stand by it. Right, so that leaves Arthur. Yeah, <clears throat> Thank, thanks, guys. Uh, very interesting. Uh, so, uh, can you say about your uh, ambitions uh, about uh, geos? So, where do you want to start with, and uh, where do you want to move? And you mentioned that MRR twenty three thousand uh, as a as a target for <clears throat> that uh, the end of uh, seed round. So. Like uh, what's what's going to be uh, uh, your geo at that point? So at the end of uh, seed round, uh, and then maybe a third question, if it's okay, uh, about uh, total addressable market. Like uh, so, how how big uh, that kind of service ca can be? Like, uh, did did you try to assess it somehow? Yes, we we have tried actually. Um, well. Needless to say, the e-commerce market in general is huge. Obviously, the estimates show anywhere between 12 and 24 million of online shops on, uh, all over the world. Um, uh, uh, you know, to make it more regional, we have uh, targeted Europe as our first uh, uh, target. So uh, uh, specifically Poland as our sort of trial, and then, then comes the UK and eventually the rest of Europe. And um, we believe that our uh, um, product of urban market um, if you could go back, I apologize. Yeah. The, we, we believe uh, that the, our first target will be the 34% of, uh, of, of the online shops from that region. This data, this is, this is backed on the data that we got that 33, 34% of the online shops actually already make some sort of reference to CSR activity on the website. So they could be our first potential customers. Now we obviously took, when we were building our financial plans, we. We took that number, we, we took a small portion at uh, near half a percent and using the top down and bottom up methods, we worked out uh, our, uh, our MR, MRR in the overall number of customers. So I think this captures both the questions. Um, I'll show what else. Okay, cool. And that would be a great uh, kickoff of the pitching session. Uh, so thank you very much, Donate Wise, for a great uh, pitch. And now we uh, we move to uh, tool camp. So Bogusia, get ready. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Bogusia from Toolcamp, a platform allowing you to run Windows, Mac, and Linux apps in a browser. That's Peter. Oh, just um, not sure why. Okay. That's Peter, freelance web designer cooperating with clients, subcontractors, and other coworkers. His main goal is to work smoothly and to deliver all projects on time. It's not easy when he faces so many problems. Uh, his MacBook just broke and Peter couldn't finish his work. His old laptop runs on Windows and Peter uses it when he needs Excel and the office pack he paid for. With most of his clients, Peter connects on Teams, but some of them prefer Slack or Zoom. He would like to have one easy, safe SSO to all apps he must use on any device. 
With Toolcamp, you can open your digital workspace from any device and operating system. It means that you are able to use in one place all apps you need, made for Mac, Windows, Linux, and more, mobile and desktop ones. In Toolcamp, all your work is secured with a single sign-on to all apps at once. No more restoring forgotten passwords or a risk of losing data. Toolcamp allows teams to collaborate and create separate workspaces for various stakeholders or projects. How do users solve those problems right now? There are some solutions. Uh, if a user wants to aggregate apps in one place, they can use Google Workspace, but the set of applications is imposed and closed. They may also use browser extension like Sidekick, but it won't open a desktop app or favorite game. Organization can create workspaces for teams in Basas or Rippling, but they lack either friendly UX or a simple setup. Toolcamp covers all of the above and moreover is able to integrate competitor solutions in our platform. In the first stage, we are opening Toolcamp for individual users in a freemium model. It will let us grow. To monetize, we are going to offer a premium version for team collaboration. We are still assessing the side of the cross-platform productivity software market, but we know that most of the Fortune 500 companies use more than one operating system. We also found out that people working remotely blend personal and work devices. The productivity software market is worth roughly $60 billion a year, and it's growing 13% a year. Before launching in the US, we plan to test the platform with early adopters in Poland. We already found more than 30 individuals and companies eager to use Toolcamp. We prove that we are able to deliver Toolcamp, our complementary team of developers and business specialists experience in startups and innovative projects has worked on this platform since last May. In only nine months, we launched social media channels and website, which, thanks to CEO strategy, were visited by over 1,000 people organically. We have interviewed over 150 professionals and companies to find the product market fit. We have a list of over 30 warm leads willing to try Toolcamp. And now we will start testing the tiny MVP with real customers. We could continue bootstrapping, uh, but money from investors would help us uh, to finish um, the upgraded and paid version of Toolcamp quicker. Reach out if you are interested in working cross-platform without the fuss. Our team will be happy to answer these additional questions. Thank you. Thank you, Bogusia. Perfect timing as well. So thank you for the great speech. Um, I, I'm really enjoying it. Thank uh, you. Uh, okay, so who would like to start uh, comments now? start on this time. Thanks so much um, for the presentation. I have questions about um, go to market. So who are you planning to sell as in the organization? Like I understand it's enterprise model, but who exactly? And then second of all, are you planning to like target specific industry um, first when like your solutions are being more suitable than the others or um, are you going quite broadly? Yeah, thank you for this question. This is something that we just, you know, worked out quite, quite recently. Uh, we decided to go uh, with a freemium model first to individual users. We don't, you, we are not aiming to address uh, companies at the beginning because we would like to follow the steps of Slack, for for instance, um, uh, that, you know, uh, people using Slack just brought it to their companies and it was the best way to spread you know this this uh, paid version and to and to start monetizing the platform so of course we are um, about you know when it comes to uh, to taking over the market and to to get the first users of course we are uh, just uh, starting the test with with real customers so we made this this really tiny really small uh, MVP which is maybe maybe kind of a demo of the of the product but it lets uh, it lets us show the the opportunities that it gives and of course, we are working with the content marketing, educating uh, the market. Um, we, we want to go organically. And of course, then based on the, on the data uh, coming from, from users built, uh, of, of, of course, also the paid presence um, in the internet. So uh, the industry we, that we are addressing is basically um, IT uh, as, the, as the first step, um, meaning you know, IT professionals, uh, developers, because they're, they are more, mostly eager to try new solutions. And um, they basically use more than one device. They use 
multiple operating systems. So for them, it would be real value to try to come. Got it. Thank you. Points from my end, um, so, so the first one is, can we talk about some initial use cases that we're solving? So something that uh, will actually lower the barrier during the, the go-to-market phase. Do you have some types of organizations, not necessarily just size, but rather what they work in um, on? Um, you know, what like I'm trying to understand whether this is more for Series A software startup or for manufacturing or for something in between or what's your beachhead market ultimately we are thinking about software houses for instance about um, uh, freelance uh, web developers and uh, app developers we are thinking about agencies that must use uh, multiple uh, platforms uh, to perform their their work uh, for example you know we, we figured it out during the interviews with them we, we've had you know, not only the sur internet surveys, but also the um, wide, you know, and deep conversation with them. So we found out that, for example, marketing agencies use multiple platforms because they have to operate, they have to work on um, various uh, applications and programs for, you know, to, to serve their clients and to um, finish their projects. So for them, it would be great to, you know, not being... Um, forced to buy multiple different devices, let's say uh, MacBooks and uh, comp computers with Windows system. Uh, and they just, you know, can open everything in one in one computer. And basically, uh, I would I can switch to the uh, to the slide, because this uh, mainly for on this monetization um, phase, it will uh, help reduce reducing costs of, of many uh, things uh, uh, in companies. Uh, so this is something that we figured out during the interviews. This is not something that we, you know, came with as a as an assumption. All right. So let's uh, give some space to Arthur as well. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, I, I would like to go, come back to that uh, uh, go to market. It's uh, you, you mentioned several channels uh, uh, how to reach that individuals, but uh, in, because uh, the, like tools seems to be great and it's uh, like this is very promising. But uh, what's your plan to reach individuals that uh, are relatively distributed. So which channels you think are the most promising? Do you have any ideas about like how much you can spend for one individual and uh, or how many individuals you can reach after uh, the financing round? Thank you for this question. This is something that we are still working on as we didn't test uh, the platform with the clients yet. So it's going to, you know, the, the first stage will be very important and, and crucial to find out what works, what, what doesn't work. Basically, we prepared all the, um, uh, you know, um, content to, to spread uh, all over and, you know, to build the, um, the funnels uh, to, to get you know new new users through it but of course we also count on a word of mouth uh, from our first early adopters uh, which we already convinced to to give it, to give us um, a try uh, and after that you know while we we know uh, what works, what doesn't work. We will be able to count it. I would, I wouldn't like to define it uh, at this moment because we are working basically on the on the technology right now, and of course we are preparing for this uh, go-to-market uh, strategy. But this is something that we are still uh, considering to to change to 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 optimize. Okay, so, so that's a great answer. Uh, thank you, Bogusha. Uh, the you know, time is ticking, so so we need to move uh, to another uh, project. Uh, so this is Todol RM. Uh, Anya, the floor is yours. Hi. Have you ever had this situation where you run into a friend you haven't seen for years and you said something like, we must grab a coffee sometime? And you really, really meant to call him, but you never did. Well, <laughs> you're not alone. In our busy, digitalized world, most of us suck at keeping in touch. And we regret it. <laughs> most of the people we asked said they were not happy with how often they see their friends, yet they work harder at their careers than their relations. 
And it's not about having too many connections. It's about not knowing how to build better relations. People say they wish they had more time to do it. The same people find the time to meditate, to learn languages, to stay fit, and to build habits. Well, social relations can help you with all of that. They make you happier, healthier, more successful. They even improve your memory and life expectancy. That's why we're on a mission to help people be better at people. Thanks to Dodo RN, you learn how to stay better, stay in touch better, develop good relation habits, and keep all the relevant information about the people you know in one place. Based on your preferences and time available, we'll craft a habit building program for you and remind you every day about the actions you can take to keep your relations alive. Uh, we'll motivate you to stay on track and share useful relation tips with you. We'll also, also let you know when it's time to save a relation from going extinct. The meditation market went from close to zero to hundreds of millions of dollars in just seven years. We believe the time for our market to start growing like that is now. Our target are digital millennials like ourselves and they'll pay uh, for the premium version of the app with either money or social capital. We expect to reach about 100,000 users by 2025. Our competition are personal CRMs that aggregate contacts and send reminders, generic habit building apps, and self-improvement apps that fight for our users' time. And here's the team. I've developed my marketing product and CEO skills in a few startups, exiting one of them. Piotr is an experienced data scientist at a unicorn startup, and Mario was born to be a startup CTO. He's also one of the greatest software and life hackers I know. We love working together and sailing together. Greg, our mentor, is amazing at keeping in touch with thousands of people. Anya takes care of our design, including our brand hero, hero <laughs> Drodo. Um, after turning our idea upside down during the acceleration, we're now working on our MVP and plan to have 1,000 pre-signups before launching later this year. Now, don't give us your money just yet, but, but please do share your social capital with us. Go to dodorm.app, sign up, and let your friends know that soon they'll be able to keep their relations alive with us. Thank you. Perfect timing, exactly three minutes. Incredible. So thank you, Anna. Uh, well done. Uh, so who would like to start commenting? My, my co-founder is here. <laughs> Does he have a question, though? <laughs> I, 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 can, I can start. Um, so uh, I, you know, I'm trying to understand at what point you, you appear in the in the customer customer discovery process. So w whether this will be very you know, unwanted and you, you will need to educate the market or you see some some volume in, in in Google search or whatever uh, where you kind of would fit in. Uh, it, it seemed that it's rather the the former, uh, but you know, allow me to understand better the the initial acquisition uh, and how it will be done. Okay, so well, there as you noticed, one part of it is educating the market, and just like with the meditation market, which I guess we like comparing ourselves with, uh, people didn't realize back in 2014 how good meditation can be for them. And right now, especially post COVID, it seems like there's a boost in personal CRMs and other sort of like uh, apps that help you with relations. And actually we tested uh, an AdWords campaign and we have a, an 8% uh, CTR on the ads and 5% on uh, pre signups. So it's not the best, I think it can be much better, but it shows that people are actually looking for tips on how to improve their relations. And they often mean they're like one-on-one, -on -one, like sort of like love relationships, but a lot of them also mean other relations. And we see that there's this need, like whenever we talk to somebody, they say, oh, I haven't thought of that before. So that's the education part, obviously. Um, but uh, they, they do understand the need. And um, actually we plan to develop um, a community building, our community building efforts, as well as social media activity and content campaign to educate users basically, and sort of like have them cling to this, this idea of building better relations and then sort of like sell them the app. So if, I, if, I'm, if I may, uh, you mentioned uh, 
potential groups of competitors, which yep. is, uh, I believe that there are more. Uh, and so what may, makes you different uh, among them and how, how would you like to communicate to individuals? Um, okay, so as far as we know, but uh, you, can, you can correct me, there is no like direct competition in this mm -hmm. space, meaning habit building app that is aimed at building better relations with others. There are apps that help you build habits and we've tested them obviously. And there are personal CRMs. So on one hand, personal CRMs uh, basically remind you to keep in touch with people, but they're, well, some of them are smarter than others, but in the end it's about basically remembering to stay in touch. While we discovered during our customer discovery that the problem is much deeper because people do understand that they have to stay in touch. They do realize that they have a lot of connections, but the more basic problem is that they don't know how. So our app will address this issue of not knowing how and actually building the habit because we basically fell out of touch um, with you know, keeping our relations going and we have to fall back into this habit. And on the other hand, we have the habit apps that could help with that, obviously, but they are not targeted at relations specifically. They do offer an option to remind me to call my parents or remind me to stay in touch with my friends. But again, they're very generic and they don't tell you what exactly you can do to stay in touch better. And we want to improve that. Okay, thanks. Um, could you actually give me some examples on, of those how? Because I, I fully get the issue. Like I, I face it myself, but I'm so struggling to understand a bit whether it's more, whether you're focusing more on the habit building side of things or reminder side of things or a more effective ways of building the relationships with people. Could you elaborate more on how? And I think that Dak also mentioned all the tech stuff. Could you uh, also say a bit more what this, your tech actually is? Yeah, so, so we actually discovered that it's not a, as much about uh, automating uh, everything. It's more about basically teaching people how to build better relations. And those are just examples. And we're, uh, we're gonna be consulting obviously with behavioral psychologists and doing a lot of research because we're just at the beginning of our path here. But uh, we want to trigger actions that actually make sense for somebody. And at the same time, show them that they don't take a lot of time. So calling your mom can take five to 10 minutes, like in, in this example. Messaging somebody can take three to five minutes, but we also want to build the habit of uh, sort of like filling in the right information about the people so you would later on could fall back on something when talking to them. So the habit isn't only about contacting somebody, but also opening up their contact card and filling in their birthday, filling in their hobbies and sort of like uh, learning how to be in touch more mindful with people because you know who they actually are and you remember what their kids' names are, what their birth birthdays are and all of this important info. So on one hand, we have the connections in one place and knowing all the info you have on them. On the other hand, we have the trigger, the action we tell you to do. And on the third hand, if there existed <laughs> a third hand, we have uh, the tips on how exactly you can connect with somebody with a given action. Cool. Perfect. So uh, thank you very much uh, for the presentation and for all the answers. And now we uh, we move to the uh, next project, which is Thrive. So Veronica, uh, please join us. OK, hello. Uh, do you hear me? Yeah. My name is Veronika Rashala and I'm a serial founder and I'm happy to present to you my new project called Thrive. So imagine that you're a woman who as a teenager moved to the big city for her studies. One night at the student's house, some PhD students tried to rape you. It was for you a very lonely experience as it was still a taboo topic and even close ones didn't need to, the need to support you with therapy. So you have learned that this is what may happen to you as a woman and you should suck it up and keep going. So I did because I was this woman. After the university, I finally could afford to see a therapist, but I found out therapy once a week was not enough for me. I was looking for social support in the startup community I've joined. I met women who were extremely supportive and acted as role models for me. Later, I was named a strong woman in IT myself, but I was not feeling strong at all then, as I have again experienced this time successful rape. 
It took me a while to pull myself together and get on with my entrepreneurial life. I took comfort in educating myself about psychology and neuroscience research, sport and art. Only recently have I started to share my story with other women and found out I'm not alone. Numbers speak by themselves. But what really struck me here is the fact that it is more common for women to experience rape and physical violence than depression. Life gave me lemons, but it has also made me stronger. So I've decided to make lemonade. And here's an app I've created and consulted with psychologist Domika Zaremba to help other women thrive. The app has three main features, educational part, one-on-one -on -one chat with experts and support group chat. Support network and behavioral activation tools it provides make up for the secret sauce of the app that is vital for the full recovery. App works as a companion for women and a therapy tool in one. Here are my main competitors. At this industry, mental health, uh, in mental health, it's actually booming now. So what most of those solutions are not considering is the fact that men and women need a solution that is cut specifically for their needs. There starts to pop up some projects on the market that focus solely on women like Hi Phoebe or Yaya showing the market potential. To attract investors, I want to target all of the women women's and support them with all of the challenges they may face and make sure the project is unicorn material. About the business model, it will be subscription-based for the B2C channel, but there are also opportunities in collaboration with corporations who may provide an app as an employee benefit. Throughout the director program, I've been able to start to work with my excellent tech-oriented mentor, Petr Tuszynski, as well as professional coach and entrepreneur based in New York City, Madison Koska. I also gathered a number of female ambassadors uh, and organizations, as well as MEG ones. I've managed to build an app prototype in Figma, as well as MVP. About the funding needs, I raised money for content creation, psychology salary to kick off the project and further develop the app. I hope that uh, you can join me in uh, changing this world with and by really listening to women's stories and addressing their needs. Thank you, Veronika, for this, uh, for sharing your personal uh, story and uh, for the pitch. Uh, who would like to start commenting? I can start. Um, thanks so much, Veronica. Um, you've rightfully mentioned that the space is booming. Uh, so could you elaborate a bit more on what's your differentiation versus other femtech um, uh, mental health apps? And then second question, could you elaborate a bit more how it looks like from a regulatory perspective? Because I know like, especially in the US, you may want or need an FDA approval, for example, to operate such app. Have you done some, some research on this? Um, yeah, actually, actually, I have a lot of uh, information I can share with you, uh, but I will have to be very short here because that's, that's, the, uh, that's the idea about this competition. So first of all, I like you, like this, this data, 75%, women are 75% more likely to use digital tools for healthcare than men. And I think it's, well, um, like it will try, transfer to a uh, little churn, right? So if you target men, then they will stop using the app. So that's that's the first thing why I'm, uh, I'm, I'm targeting women. The second thing is that, uh, so the app, the, the market differentiates itself by either targeting just one thing. So the, the chat, uh, like Sesh, for example, is, a, is an app that is uh, so providing only the video chat. That is might be uh, it might happen that I will target that that what that one as well like to to give a video chat but as an MVP I have prepared the chats in the normal version yeah second thing is the uh, uh, I want to make sure that this is based on the science. So I want to use behavioral science uh, to make sure that the women are actually activating themselves because behavioral activation is the part of this uh, psychology that is currently in a trend as a third wave of uh, CBT. Uh, they are using uh, behavioral uh, activation as a way to, to change uh, the habits. Yeah, so this is a very important part for me as well. And uh, the, the, 
the question about FDA thing is that, for example, SESH, they are not stating this is a therapy. The group supports chat is not stating this is a therapy, but it's led by the psychologists anyway. Yeah. So they are not pretending it's a therapy, but they are providing the social network support. Yeah. So it really depends on the, the status of the project, because at the beginning, I want to start with just creating community with the specialists. And, and later on, I want to gradually add some scientific background for that. And also maybe at some point, even target B2G, but the first channels to go is B2C and B2B. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, next questions. Mihao Arthur, who would like to be next? Sure. Uh, like, you know, let, let, let's focus a bit more on the on the product and then the business model because uh, I think it was touched on rather lightly during the pitch. So uh, I imagine it's an app, as you mentioned. But but can you share a bit more uh, on? No, exactly. You know, not only the science behind, but but rather, what sort of activation you expect within the app uh, from your users? So first of all, I want this to be a companion for a woman's life, right? So that it, they use it about an hour and uh, an hour a day, because that's that's what I got from the the interviews I had with other women that they actually need something like this, especially right now in the COVID times, they need someone to talk to and not they don't necessarily want to share it with their real friends because sometimes they feel that they are exposing them with too much negative thoughts or something or that they are oversharing. So they don't want to really like um, destroy their own relationships. So they want to be more uh, secure about it and they want to still uh, get a help, right? And, and those topics that I've mentioned, this is just an example because uh, normally people don't avoid those topics because they seem very hard to share and they should not be because it's, it's so common. If you really take a look at those numbers, it's like, it's like crazy, like one in four, one in five, those like, I mean, I don't know, I don't know any woman that didn't have such an experience like me. I'm, most of the women that I started to share the story, they shared their own. And that's the feedback I get. I get. When the, I started to share the stories, they just keep coming to me. And it's actually overwhelming to hear all of them at once. And I think that this is something to be changed, to be more brave, to talk about it, because it's a real issue. Like today, I, I've read an article where so, they... Sorry, sorry <laughs> I need to interrupt uh, Veronica, but I, mm -hmm. you know my role, so sorry. Uh, no let's problem. Give, uh, let's give a, a voice to Arthur as well. Maybe he has a question and just very brief comment, please. Yeah, so, so very shortly, like, uh, uh, can you say uh, a little bit about your team member or who, who you need to uh, develop the app and to go to market? Yeah, I mean, uh, with the team, it's not that difficult, I must mm -hmm. say, because people are very interested. And actually, this this topic that is uh, it's impact uh, startup, it makes people mm -hmm. in, want to come in and join. Because, for example, Dominika Zaremba, she just left Talent Alpha because she wanted to do something more impactful for the for the world. And uh, right now, she's at Nancy Key Institute, and I I believe that the, the reason she wants to cooperate with me is that it's very impacting startup mm -hmm. and uh, about uh, other people uh, I'm talking with. Uh, I have actually one, one person, I cannot share his name yet, but he's really like, he's currently in exit. And I, I think that he will be a perfect match for this project to, right. to, to join the boards. Yeah. Great. So we have to finish here. I know there's much more to uh, to elaborate and talk about the app, uh, but uh, there are more people uh, waiting. So thank you, Veronika, for for sharing uh, the deck. And uh, and now, please, Valerie from StoryMaze. Uh, but Veronika, you have to stop sharing your screen. All right. So so now let's wait for Valerie. Hi there, I'm Valerie Kozlov, uh, CEO and founder of StoryMaze. And today I want to talk with you about women. In particular, let's talk about Esther. She's single female, she's 30 years old plus. Uh, she's uh, pretty much self-defending, got a decent job, and she's uh, uh, managing her life pretty well like many other millennial women. And also she's a book lover in Roman gender. So I want you to think about the following. 
what is it to be a self-dependent uh, single woman in most recent turbulent years? I guess sometimes it could be uh, pretty difficult and stressful. So in particular, Esther find a way for herself to uh, distress herself and uh, to find some relief. And here I'm talking about entertainment, and in particular, I'm talking about romance and erotic fiction audiobooks, which is getting more and more popular uh, type of entertainment among women. <clears throat> so this particular insight, as well as some other fantastic and amazing insights, we discovered during our uh, design thinking workshop, trying to answer one simple question. How can te technology improve sexual well-being? So we combined some of our insights with uh, market uh, data, in particular about erotic uh, audio market uh, during the pandemic. And we decided that we want to build a product uh, which will provide uh, users with interactive, sensual storytelling experience. So what is it uh, about interactivity? Uh, so here uh, it is about well-known choose-around adventure format, which we adopted to uh, audio stories. And basically at the end of each story, uh, you as a user need to make a choice for protagonist, which will uh, influence how story flows. Uh, so at the moment we built an MVP application with limited amount of content. It is available for Android and for iPhone. Uh, and we performed some early testing with the influencers, Instagrammers, and we uh, received a positive feedback. More than half of them uh, reported that the interactivity is a, a very uh, useful and uh, entertaining feature of the product. So basically, the business model is pretty simple. It is simply some subscription, monthly subscription for streaming service. Uh, we see three main, uh, four main uh, segments of competitors. We do a competitor analysis in pretty, uh, <clears throat> pretty carefully, uh, and our target market share is uh, twenty-five million dollars. Uh, uh, and in team, uh, we've got me. I consider myself as a good uh, in a building uh, niche companies. We've got uh, Ole Medzinska, who is mentor and uh, uh, advisor for Sestex startups. We've got Kristina Connell, she's industry veteran in publishing. We've got Anastasia, who's research and translator. And we've got Bogdan, who is covering all the technical aspects of the product. Uh, and in terms of this measurement, we are looking for relatively small uh, <clears throat> amount. We are looking uh, to raise it from angel investors and micro VC, and we want to spend it on content acquisition and testing of micro segments and, uh, and genres. Uh, so if you know someone who is brave enough to uh, invest in such industry and such product, please let me know. I'll be happy to connect. Thank you so much. Great, Valerie. Uh, perfect timing again and a uh, great pitch uh, as uh, usually. Uh, so uh, thanks on that. Who would like to start uh, commenting? I can start. Uh, uh, thanks for the pitch. Um, the, who, who's producing the content ultimately? Is that you know, in a house? Is that somehow a bit like masterclass? So there is some sort of author, but you need to do quite extensive work around you know, production uh, to, to put it on the platform, how it's currently done at, at StoryMaze? Okay, so thank you for the uh, actually the great question. So uh, initially, the initial amount of content we produced in order to test the content formula, we were using uh, ghostwriters. Uh, but at the moment, we see that probably the their level is kind of not good enough. So we are here focusing our efforts in two directions and we need to check which one works better. So first we are looking uh, to um, actually, we are contacting uh, indie authors who are successful in uh, particular subgenres. Uh, and uh, we want to collaborate with them and see how, I you know, uh, how um, we can engage them to create content for us or probably uh, modify an existing content or the best way is you know to acquire some non-finished content actually this is one way and another is that uh, we are looking for some particular uh content creators but in short snackable uh, stories uh, segment because this is a little bit different segment but we see it is very attractive because he's growing faster than the uh, uh, rest of the segments in the um, in the market Okay, thank you. Cool. 
who would like to go next? Thank, thank, uh, okay, so go, uh -huh. go ahead, Marta. No, no, no. <laughs> go, go. So, the, so short question is uh, like uh, this is a B two C product uh, at relatively crowded space, uh, as as you mentioned, and uh, you you are rising now twenty five thousand euro. <clears throat> so, how how do you see ne next steps of, after that that round? It's uh, uh, because uh, and how how much capital do you, you think you you need to rise in total like to be successful? Okay, uh, so uh, basically 75,000 we spend on uh, particular, like let's say initial pack of content, uh, which we target to particular uh, micro segments and we want, you know, to, to, to do some product market uh, feed validation, additional product market feed validation. But once we get some traction there, uh, we will be, you know, first of all, scaling in these segments in which we uh, going uh, well and uh, probably acquiring neighboring uh, segments. So in total, I think uh, uh, we might need additional, after this round, we might need additional uh, 200,000 uh, euros. Uh, and that will be good enough for uh, enough amount for, for, you know, for the launch. And after that, I think uh, we might need more, but this is a different story. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a very short question from me. In terms of geographical focus, are you targeting any specific specific region, geography? How are you thinking about that? Yes, at the moment we're solely focused on the uh, English-speaking market in North America. Uh, theoretically, we could be interested to expand to Asia later because it is also a very promising uh, region. But obviously, with totally with kind of a bit different. Uh, uh, consuming uh, patterns. Uh, Europe is attractive as well, but Europe, you know, it is not like monolithic in terms of uh, languages. So we are not in rush here. We have seen some startups who were trying to, to address Hispanic markets, uh, German speaking markets, and they were not successful. So we are kind of doing a safe bet on English speaking market. Thanks, Thank you. Okay, uh, great. Uh, thank you for, for the questions and, and brief answers. So we're uh, very much on time. Uh, now we will move to ranking school, our next uh, startup. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you guys for joining and uh, listening to us. It's a big day. Uh, for all of us. And um, my name is uh, Robert Borkiewicz and let me present you a school uh, ranking. Um, I'm a father of uh, four kids and choosing a school for them has been always a challenge. We've been looking into um, exam results, into opinions about the school or its location but we couldn't find a site uh, with uh, all this information together. So this is how the idea about school ranking uh, arose. And school ranking provides um, uh, the information about uh, the best school in your location based on opinions about the school and exam uh, results. So how does it work? Uh, for parents and kids, we are providing uh, a school ranking covering all schools or primary and secondary schools in Poland with the basic information about the school. In the premium version, we are thinking about uh, matching the best, uh, the perfect school based on uh, kids' uh, individual profile and potential um, exam results of the uh, graduate. On the other hand, we have schools uh, where branding, marketing, and uh, recruitment activities can be a challenge uh, as well. So for them, we are offering a basic school profile. This is for free. In the premium option, we offer digital marketing um, solutions. In terms of co competitions, in Poland, we have Perspective and Vasha Edukacja. However, they are not either covering uh, the uh, all schools or are not uh, uh, interactive. Uh, internationally, this kind of rankings are provided by non-profit organization. 
However, there is an example of commercial organization, commercial company called Niche in US uh, with the um, revenue of more than 20, uh, 20 million dollars uh, per year, uh, which on one hand is a competitor uh, in US, but on the other hand, uh, it's proving that this model is, um, uh, is working. Uh, in terms of uh, business case for Poland, it's estimated for uh, 750,000 uh, euro based on these two groups uh, of users, so, so parents and schools. Um, the service is already there. We've uh, launched uh, last year. Uh, so far, we have attracted uh, uh, nearly 50,000 unique users. Um, and uh, some schools as well. Uh, for this year, we are looking um, for further development based on presented model uh, with uh, estimated uh, cost of, of about uh, 200,000 um, uh, 200, uh, euro. Uh, myself, I'm experienced in uh, IT managerial roles for 20 years and for five years, I'm uh, providing, I'm managing my own company and I have a comprehensive team that uh, supports me in this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, very good timing uh, and interesting pitch, completely different uh, topics that we covered before. Uh, so who would like to uh, start commenting? Um, Do we have any parents? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a parent, but I can start. Great. Um, so I have two questions. First question, so could you elaborate how exactly you're planning to make money? Um, mm -hmm. so not sure I got it. And then second thing, in terms of like data collection, which is feeding into your platform, how does it work? Like, are you taking information yeah, from like publicly available like rankings? Um, yeah or where exactly, thank you. So, so let, let me start with the second question. So if, uh, I'm collecting the data from uh, public uh, databases, the databases like uh, uh, the database of all schools uh, in Poland and uh, exam results, which are published uh, um, uh, as well. Um, and in terms of uh, making a money, there are two group of uh, users. So on one hand, there are parents and kids, and uh, for them, we are offering this uh, premium version. We plan to offer this premium version with uh, matching the school based on the individual profile and uh, potential exam results. And on the other hand, we have schools uh, where we offer um, a digital marketing uh, uh, solutions uh, in, the, in the premium um, version. So these uh, two sources are uh, giving, you know, uh, 70, uh, 750,000 uh, euro of, uh, uh, at least in, in, in Poland. Okay. Uh, so Robert, uh, thank, thank you for the presentation. As a, uh, a father of uh, three boys, I, I, can, <laughs> I can see like a great need for that kind of uh, service that definitely I'm not sure if it's a re really great idea for a PC backed company, but, mm -hmm. uh, but still there's, there is a need on the market. First question is about that. Uh, I understand that important part of that uh, profile of the school is uh, opinion from parents or from kids. So, uh, so this is uh, anonymous or anon yeah. anonymous. And, and so, so if you can elaborate a little bit and then like what's your ambitious? Yeah, like can you see like a fast scaling uh, in different geos in different countries? So this is mostly yeah. in Poland. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Good question. So in terms of the opinions, uh, we are using our own database. So the opinions that are uh, that people are leaving in uh, in our service. Uh, of course, when we started, it's uh, it was too little to to build a ranking based on this. So we use um, uh, opinions from, from Google. Um, in Google, they are not anonymous. Uh, you, know, the, you can see the, um, the, the name of the, of the user uh, in our system. Th these opinions are, uh, are anonymous. In terms of uh, growth uh, potential, I'm looking especially into um, the private sector. Um, of course, the public sector is, uh, uh, is spending money on, on branding and marketing as well, especially the, the secondary 
um, level. Uh, but uh, mainly I would like to, to uh, attract, uh, to target uh, private sector. Uh, so the countries which uh, have um, uh, a share, a big share of private uh, education uh, are the targets uh, in terms of uh, international growth. So, so the West, uh, West Europe, North, uh, North America as well. Mm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so from my end, uh, the, the one topic only, so, so, because I, I don't really get what's the incentive for, what's the USP for good, for good schools to be, to be on the platform, right? They don't have issues with, the, uh, with populous with, with students um, and, and they actually could you know, fight to be outside the platform unless obviously it's on public data. So, so navigate through, navigate through me, me through it, uh, like what's the USP for, let's say this top cohort, top quartile of schools? Um, so, um, of course, uh, in terms of the uh, advantage uh, from, the, from the platform and, uh, and the need for, for you know, digital marketing and, and uh, brand building, uh, in terms of brand build, building, this, this is uh, uh, something that, uh, you know, all schools are interested uh, in, especially this uh, uh, from the top, uh, top se sector. Uh, in terms of uh, marketing needs, uh, um, this is the need, uh, especially for, for the new schools. And uh, the, the market of private uh, education is growing 30% uh, by, um, by four, four years um, in Poland. And you know, the, uh, the, the, the reforms, uh, every reform that um, uh, each government uh, uh, gives uh, provides uh, in the education platform increases actually the um, uh, the number of uh, private uh, um, schools uh, uh, in Poland. So I estimate that uh, you know it will be it will be growing over the next years. Good. So we uh, have to stop uh, here uh, on commenting uh, this project. So thank you very much for for the, uh, all the brief uh, answers. Uh, we have uh, three projects left, uh, and these are more um, connected to uh, hardware or production, at least. So, uh, Arthur, I see you're ready. So this is Music's label. Uh, we cannot hear you, Arthur. No, we cannot hear you. Oh, I'm terribly sorry for that. Okay, now we can hear you, but we cannot see your uh, your presentation very well. I mean, it, we can. Okay, now it's perfect. I'm ready. I'm sorry for that. So good. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, Ninety million. That's the number of guitar amateurs entering the market each year. We can certainly tell two things about them. One, they spend $230 on guitar accessories. And the second thing, they all picture themselves like this. But soon it comes up that it looks more like this. You realize that all this equipment is essential and it costs a lot. Setting up wastes your precious playing time, checking chords, switching the tempo distracts you from practice. In addition, not knowing what to practice, do I play it correctly, could be very discouraging, believe me. So we came with a solution, the music label. First in the world, all-in-one multi-tool that helps guitar enthusiasts to save their time and money and to stay focused on guitar practicing. Looking at the competitors or the market itself, we can see that there are two types of gear, external accessories, accurate but bulky and uncomfortable, and smartphone apps, modern but inaccurate and highly disturbing. We took what is the best from both of them and combined it into a fully comfortable and highly accurate device turning the guitar into a multi-tool accessory. So after a few months of hard work, we made a music label, device that combines all essential devices into one, fits any guitar, doesn't damage the instrument, thanks to piezo sensor built in is highly accurate, gives instant feedback about your practice in progress, and doesn't ruin your budget, because it costs much less than all devices it replaces, both separately. But how big is the market? According to the data, music accessories and textbook market is $2.4 billion big. We are aiming in half percent of it and a total revenue of $100 million eventually. Because as it is shown in the last few years, new products achieve huge market success. Brands such as Spark, 
sound brander, musician, or even the latest one, roadie coach. So far, we verified all technical aspects. We verified the business concept by signing letter of intent, by gathering testimonials, and by receiving a grant of $50,000. Currently, we're finishing our MVP, and in a couple of weeks, we'll have pre-production version running. At this point, we are looking for investment of $300,000. One third of it, we will engage in the marketing and a Kickstarter campaign as a part of our go-to-market strategy. That will allow us to start a regular sale in both offline and online channel. But two thirds of it, we will engage in AI and app development, which will allow us to start a subscription model, marketplace, and sell software bundles in the quarter four. Our financial projections in medium scenario assume $65 million of revenue within the next six years and $28 million of profit in the same period, period of time. Our team consists of highly experienced professionals covering pretty much all needed areas of business at this point. But what is more important, we all love to play the guitar and are willing to spread this love all over the world. Thank you. This is incredible. That was exactly three minutes. Uh, and I love new pictures of you playing. Uh, okay, so um, anyone would like to start commenting? And do we have guitarists here? No one playing guitar, but okay, we have uh, Jerry. So uh, who starts? Sure, I, I can start. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not playing guitar, though. Uh, I tried piano and it was... It was a mistake. Uh, um, <laughs> anyways, th thanks, thanks for the presentation, Arthur. Like, I, I want to kind of spar with you uh, the, the market size. So you mentioned this 90 mil of, of new uh, guitarists, guitar amateurs every year. Uh, but, but like, it, it seems quite excessive. Do you have maybe some other benchmark, um, some, some other benchmark, some other data points? Maybe, for example, have an idea. What's the retention? What's the engagement that musician? Uh, I mean, for example, what percentage of users stayed in the app for more than two months or something like this, right? Because I don't really believe that your mix of a software and hardware is something that you buy day, um, at the day one of this guitar journey, right? Um, so, so I think it's you need to to, to really be into it uh, and i think this uh, this happens after a few months uh, and so so maybe this musician us benchmark could be helpful here uh, to, to 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 benchmark that date the, the market data points that you shared um during the pitch okay uh where to start uh i would say that it works a little bit both ways because uh, at the first step as we can see here we would like to launch a kickstarter campaign and start to sell a hardware as as, as a hardware itself in this case, the application is uh, only and as <laughs> is an extension of the music label of the possibilities that the device that the music label provides to all the guitarist players. So the, the first big step or the first idea is to sell the hardware itself within the in the in the quarter three. Uh, and we believe very, very much in it because we see some references of some examples that I would say they, they won the market. Uh, by using the Kickstarter campaign or just going to the market with the hardware. Like I, like I said, the app is, I would say, an extension. But on the other hand, there's another, I would say, channel that you can uh, give this application, I would say, for free to, to give some uh, features, to so show some features, and then the music label becomes extension of the application. So we're thinking about more like building an environment of music label which you can enter either way from the hardware point of view at the first step, or your first step could be the application when you download it and see that uh, with it, it's, it's much better or significantly better with the music label on your guitar. And the numbers that we can show those, the, the last slide maybe, maybe I'll show, because those are the, I would say, reference examples from the last 12, maybe 18 months. Those are, are all other projects, I would say guitar, gadgets, devices, two of them had like um, premiere on, on Kickstarter, one to be honest, six days ago, and they made a goal in two and a half minutes. So that's how it looks like. I can jump in maybe. Um, I also don't play the guitar, unfortunately. Um, I also tried piano and I failed miserably too. Um, but in terms of the use case, so 
yeah what exactly what's exactly the use case is it more learning is it more practicing what what this hardware is actually or can like show me in terms of from, from like user perspective yes yes of course so i would start from the technical technical point of view because the music's label this i would say label uh is on the guitar, is all the time with the guitarist, it listens how you play, it analyzes how you play. And what you can do by, by us, like the company, with this, I would say there are endless possibilities. Because, for example, it can teach you. That's obvious. It can show you how to play or what to play because it has to displace. But when we are going a little bit further, uh, for example, when I mention the marketplace, we can use this uh, music label for the guitar teachers to to put their own courses into this device and just with one sentence we can make that this teacher is like literally always by your side because the, the, the music label listens analyzes sends information to the teacher and the teacher can give you provide you another exercises for example you don't need to carry the hard book the the textbook with you because you have everything i would say on your guitar in the form much much more uh, um, comfortable than 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 the, the app phone than the phone itself and so on. At the other stage, I would say, uh, if it's come to software bundle, imagine that you can buy, let's say, ten biggest or the best guitar solos ever, or the bunch of Christmas carols in the Christmas time. You can download it. You can have it on your music label. Again, it listens how you play. It can, it can tell you how should you play or what should you, let's say, practice in order to play this song better or so on and so on. We have this, I would say, pretty much covered because one of our team members is a very experienced professional guitar player and a teacher. So he knows what, <laughs> what this device should have to be, to, to be the best on the market at, at this point. Great, Arthur? Arthur, uh, so thank you. <laughs> Just don't tell me that you don't play guitar either. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but uh, but uh, very interesting one. Maybe I, I would <laughs> with you guys. Uh, so uh, uh, can you can you uh, uh, how far are you are with uh, uh, the pricing model you have? Do you plan any subscription model? And do, do you know anything about the cost of the production? Of you, course. You, you can expect, uh, yeah, so tell of us course. About so, so, so we plan to, to, to have this product, to sell this product in a retail for $199, so let's say $200. The cost of production at, uh, are now more or less 20, 20, 25% of this price. So it will give us a quite big margin. Uh, and this advantage on the, on the two fields, yeah, because it encourages all the offline sellers to sell it because the margin is pretty, pretty awesome, to be honest. And on the other hand, our own sales gives us a significant kickback of money to invest, to develop all this software, AI and so on part of the, part, part, part of the business. When it comes to the subscription model, it usually costs $10 a month or $100 when you pay annually, when you pay a year. Then you have access for all those softwares, all those bundles, always fresh, always at your site, always at your guitar, uh, something like this. Of course, mentioned musician is much more expensive, but it's a, it's, a, it's a software that is focused on learning people how to play the guitar. That's our another step in maybe one and a half years as well. All right, so let's stop uh, here. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, Q&A session uh, for this project. And now we move to uh, Dragon Seed. So Adrian, please share your screen and the floor is yours. So hello everyone, I'm Adrian and this is Dragon Seed. At the beginning, I want you all to meet Veron. Veron is a gaming streamer. He is super expressive and entertaining during his streams. His average audience is around 10,000 people. And now imagine, it is eight straight hours of his stream. Now, his thoughts are more towards whether people see Westerns on his chair or not. Uh, the performance drops and goes to the second plan. Do they still love me? Do they think that I'm disgusting? How to stay cool, he thinks to himself. Uh, so in Europe, there are 408 million people playing games, but we target 35% of them which are hardware enthusiasts, all-around enthusiasts, ultimate gamers, and conventional players. Those types love hardware, and they spend as much as they can for equipment. 
The number of, of people playing games in the world is 3.2 billion at this moment, and is growing by 5% every year. Our target market revenue is uh, $26 million, but it's growing rapidly. The main competition is Diablo Shares, Secret Lab, DX Racer, and Quartus. They are pretty good and solid firms, but they have two things in common. They don't make shares with cooling system, and their users can't customize uh, their chairs. That's why we built Dragon Seed Share, a chair that has a flat seat, which is pretty unique uh, in the market, lower back pillow and mechanism, which allows user uh, to find the most comfortable position for himself, a cooling system that is installed inside both seat and back support, and uh, the chair is fully customizable, so there is no way you won't like how it looks, right? Uh, so right now, we are building a community on Discord. Uh, we will finish Share Configurator in March. Uh, we plan to develop uh, Dragon Seed 1.0 in May, and we will start an advertising campaign in June. We are raising $200,000 uh, to finish Dragon Seed 1.0 for operations and to advertise properly the product. In the team, there is uh, Kuba Musialik, uh, the CTO, who is the best IT specialist I know. There is also a free vacancy for graphic designer. And uh, there, uh, there is also uh, me, uh, Adrian Dusak, uh, and I am uh, the former captain of uh, Polish U20 ice hockey national team. Uh, and during uh, many years of training, I gained the knowledge about what real dedication is. And today I use that skill in developing uh, my business. We are two friends uh, with real passion in, in gaming. We were playing hockey together, and that taught us uh, what real hard work and teamwork is. Uh, in the board of advisors, uh, there are Cesare Giugio and Jakub Lewandowski. And thank you for your ascension. And please remember, stay cool. Thank you. Uh, perfect timing. Three seconds uh, left. So so great. Um, okay. So uh, who would like to start uh, commenting? Any gamers now? Do we have any gamers? Okay. No gamers. But it we seems that have. we're you know just people without any passion. <laughs> just working. <laughs> You're not presenting us in the best way, Ula. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I will ask about something else, but you have to write me in the comments what should I ask. Sure, sure. Cool. I mean, uh, thanks, thanks for the presentation. For, from my point of view, I don't really get what's the differentiation compared to other producers. So allow me to understand whether this is ergonomics or the mass customization that, that you, you know, briefly showed, or I'll just talk more about distribution and logistics, which would be the case, for example, for um, for, for, I don't know, for mattresses, right? Well, what happened to mattresses? Ultimately, not with the best result, maybe, on the public public markets, but still Purple or a few other companies um, kind of change the, the lower the, the barrier in ordering the bed mattress. So I'm trying to understand where is the secret sauce in, in case of Dragon Seeds. Uh, thanks, thanks in advance for, for answering this. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, the chair will be is uh, actually fully customizable. So, uh, customer uh, first of all, the customer pays uh, in advance uh, for uh, for the chair, and uh, that's how. Uh, and then we start we start uh, production, and then we we uh, deliver it uh, to the customer. So uh, basically, uh, there will. Uh, the uh, sales will be uh, only in uh, in the internet in uh, the internet shop, and yeah, I guess uh, that's it. I don't know uh, if I answered uh, properly. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So they just say, uh, I'm not sure if I get it. So that cooling system is something like uh, that uh, is uh, totally different than competitors. Yes, yes. So, yeah, uh, so there is uh, like uh, they, uh, those, every firm uh, in the market right now uh, isn't uh, developing a cooling system. And uh, you can't, uh, you can't choose for example, a uh, graphic that you want uh, to have on your chair. Uh, and in Dragon City, you, you can uh, just send us uh, 
your favorite character of uh, of you know a movie or something, and then we will put it on the share. Mm -hmm. So if if I may, uh, the, uh, I I am not gamer, but I, I have uh, as I mentioned, I have uh, three boys uh, <laughs> at home, so they are. Uh, the, so uh, the the same the same question, uh, like do, do do how much you want to charge for the chair, and well, what what is the cost of production? Okay, so the cost of production uh, is around uh, one hundred and sixty dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and we will uh, charge 500, uh, around 500 dollars uh, per mm -hmm. uh, one share. Mm -hmm. okay. Martina, do you want to add something? Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my question is good also, but maybe one more follow up. Where do you actually plan to manufacture the chairs? Uh, so uh, there, are, there are two plans. Uh, plan A is uh, to manufacture it in Poland, uh, and the plan B uh, is uh, to to make it in in China. We have uh, already uh, spoken to to uh, people in China, and and we we almost have a deal, but but we are waiting for the response of uh, Polish company. And selling in in Poland or US or. Uh, could you repeat? What about sales? Like, where are you planning to sell? Sell. Okay. So, uh, at the beginning, uh, we we know uh, Polish market. We we know it's pretty pretty well. Uh, so that's why we we plan to start uh, in Poland. Then uh, Germany would be second uh, because it's the biggest uh, European market. And uh, we will, we will, as we will grow, we will expand. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I guess we will stop uh, here with uh, Dragon Seed um, project. So thank you, Adrian. And now we move to the last one. And just to our jury, I'm pretty sure that you do eat something. So so now uh, that's definitely something for you. Uh, so Kasia, the floor is yours. So oh, hi, uh, I'm Kasia and I'm the founder of Sunflower Plant Power Startup. Oh, okay. Um, currently, the market is dominated by soy and coconut yogurt. So what is wrong with them? Firstly, coconut yogurts are low in protein, have this sweet coconut characteristic, and they produce from imported coconut milk. On the other hand, soy yogurts also have this bean characteristic flavor. Some people say that soy products taste like cardboard. Besides, soy is also controversial and can cause allergies. What is more important, only two companies produce uh, plant-based yogurts in glass jars, and, he's, and, still have, and still half of the most popular alternatives that don't contain calcium. That's why we created Sangurts, more precisely the plant-based yogurts based on sunflower seeds. But why the Sangurt is a good choice? Because Sangurt is enriched in sunflower protein, contains calcium, it has no bean or sweet flavor, has no allergies, is produced from locally grown sunflower seeds and packed in a glass jar. It is also worth to mention that the production of uh, plant-based dairy emits 70 less percent CO2 and three times less greenhouse gases into the atmosphere and uses half as, half as much water than the traditional production. Let's move to the market. Currently in Poland, the market of plant-based yogurts is uh, 59 million lotus and our potential market share will be 5 million lotus. You may ask what has been achieved so far. About 70 people have tried sangurts, and 94% uh, said that sangurt can cope with, with other alternatives, and 88% would buy sangurt again. Uh, what is more, uh, about 200 people tried sangurts during some events, and obviously we've got positive feedback. Uh, in addition, last year sangurts secured their first few stores, and they received the first positive opinions. I quote one of them. Uh, yeah, these yogurts are a blessing for me because I'm, a, I'm vegan allergic to soy, coconuts, and nuts, so this is the only rescue for me. I'm waiting and crossing my fingers that they will be soon available in supermarkets. Uh, the 2021 was very intensive for us. We created the final recipes for three flavors of sangurts. We contacted with suppliers of ingredients, food technologists, owners of machines. We created preliminary draft of the production line and we consulted this project with food safety inspector and we aroused interest of stores and platforms. And uh, our main goal in 2022 is to start the small scale production and then distribution in local and organic stores. And to achieve these goals, we need um, 1 million slots of investment. 
we were at the stage of home production and right now we are very, very close to start the small scale production. A few words about the team. Uh, I'm the uh, founder and creator of Sunguards and I'm responsible uh, especially for product development and marketing and for the process strategy and finances. And I would like to add when I became vegan five years ago, people were saying that it would change nothing, but that's not true because together we can change everything. Thank you. Thank you, Kasia. And I'm also looking forward for the yogurt to be in the in my local store. But now let's uh, ask uh, our jury members. Uh, yes, you will be the first people that uh, that gets uh, packages with sangers. <laughs> you can be sure. <laughs> OK, so who'd like to start commenting? Sure, I mean, super interesting stuff. Um, could you share a bit more about the, the, the research that you've done? I mean, I understand that you tried this with 70 people uh, and they liked it. Um, mm -hmm. I, it's not really, I mean, it's part of the scientific process, right? So uh, allow me to understand whether the, the other parts of it were undergone as well. Uh, so you mean like, um, because we, we, we also tried um, that's right. We, we, we sold um, we sold some goods uh, in a store, so it was like the another uh, step on our way uh, to 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 check how uh, people perceive these yogurts, and they sell well, and the people uh, the pe people uh, buy them again, and again, and again. Mm -hmm. All right, but but do you, you know, believe this sort of exhausts? Did they need to, to assure the the quality and how the yogurt, I mean, so, so sangurt <laughs> behaves in, in, in time? Okay, uh, you mean like uh, the shelf life? Yeah, for, I mean, it's it's one of the variables, right? Okay, so the shelf life will be about uh, 30 days. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, thanks. Um, okay, I can go next. Thanks, Kasia. Um, I do yogurt, so yeah, and I really don't like soy yogurt, so <laughs> yeah, it sounds do. very appealing. Um, <laughs> in terms of um, again, like the, the, the regulatory and you know, IP protection side of things, do you have everything and figure it out done here, or is it still something to be done in order to first secure the IP, second move to mass production? Okay, unfortunately, um, the food product uh, cannot be secure because we have to put uh, all ingredients on the label, so it is impossible. But the only thing that we can secure is the design of the jar and trademark, obviously. Better. And in terms of more like yeah, regulatory side of things, it's ready for mass production. Uh, for this uh, small scale production, yeah, we uh, we we consulted this um, this project. Uh, this project uh, with food safety inspector and um, we got some uh, we just have to uh, meet some requirements and uh, if everything will be correct uh, the food safety the food safety inspector will approve uh, the place where we want to produce i have two questions <laughs> thank you uh, it's a uh, so one is uh, uh, do you uh, I, I understand that this is quite innovative, uh, but uh, do, do you know any other uh, uh, product like this, uh, that uh, globally? And second okay, one. In Europe, uh, okay, in Europe, we are, uh, we are the first uh, company that will be mm -hmm. producing sunflower seed based yogurts. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when it comes to the world, um, there is one, one startup that is called Sana Bloom, and they also produce uh, sunflower seed based yogurts. They are okay. from Minnesota. Okay, and and sec second question is like you you mentioned long list of uh, your advantages uh, against uh, other yogurts and which one would you pick to uh, communicate to folks uh, ju just to pick uh, sangurts not not the other yogurts. Mm, okay, so sangurts <laughs> have a lot of advantages, and I think that the um, the main the main feature of sangurts is the taste because uh, the taste is more neutral and uh, composes well with both savory and sweet dishes. 
And uh, this is not only my opinion, but also those who participated in the survey. And some people compared uh, the natural version of sangu to the kefir, cottage cheese. So uh, I think that it is a good sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Uh, all right, so uh, thank you, Kasia. Uh, and that was our last uh, pitch uh, in the contest. Uh, so now, if I can share my screen, Kasia, could you stop sharing? Yeah, I stopped. So. Ah. Okay. I... Um... Oh, yeah. Oh, all right, now it works. Okay. Um, okay. So, good. <clears throat> so, thank you uh, very much uh, for all the uh, pitchings. Um, it was, I think that it was a really good session, and I'm guys uh, very proud of you. Uh, so, now it's time for the jury to go to the breakout room uh, and for our um, audience uh, you got just the link uh, on a chat uh, here on zoom and i believe on youtube as well uh, so you can vote and the voting is open for around uh, five minutes so let me just start the um, the breakout room okay so the jury should already can you guys see the breakout room the jury members Okay, they are in the breakout room. Um, okay, so <clears throat> as I told you um, during the discussion of the uh, of the jury, we have some we have a time for some reactor X uh, announcements. Uh, so uh, let me start with the announcement that uh, Agata Kwasniewska, the CEO of Reactor X. Uh, start some new uh, endeavors. Uh, so um, thank you, Agata, for for your engagement in the project. Uh, great positive energy that you bring uh, to Reactor X, uh, and you share with us. Um, and it, it's obvious, but I will say that the Reactor X would never be in this place without you. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, would you like to say something, Agata? Sure, and thank you very much, Ola, for the kind words. Um, really appreciate it. Um, but guys, congratulations on your pitches uh, tonight. I was super proud to see uh, how you how you managed to to present your ideas, and I know how uh, hard it was and how much of the hard work it took. So so bravo for you guys. And during these five years that I had been uh, involved in Reactor X, we've accelerated more than one hundred startups, and. My first thank you would go to all the founders uh, because I really appreciate the trust uh, that uh, was present here in this relationship with Reactor X uh, because it's obviously amazing to be a part of the success story and the inspirational moments of your endeavors, but there is also the part with more stressful and more fragile moments. So I just want to say, say thank you to all the founders for trusting us enough to get involved with us and, and letting us be the part of their journey. Um, I want to say also thank you to our partners, corporates, but not only, because I believe that for these last years, we really were able to make a little bit more uh, founder-friendly environment uh, in the startup ecosystem and a little bit more innovative one. So I'm proud of that and, and thank you for uh, being with us. But obviously the most grateful I am for our mentors. And I wanna say that you are always the heart of Reactor X and I personally learned so much from you. So, so thank you for, for always supporting us and always being there for, for our startups and for us and Ola. Big, big uh, thank you for coordinating this 10th batch. Uh, you jumped straight into it. Uh, you did an amazing job, the best experience for the founders. So, so very grateful for, for how this looks. Uh, and Boris and Diana, thank you for the five years of our collaboration. Um, and as for me, 
I'm starting a new beautiful adventure uh, and I will be making life of uh, data engineers and marketing directors better. Uh, so if you have some marketing data uh, that you want to use in most optimal way, I will be very happy to have a chat and you can find me on LinkedIn under my name, Agata Kwaśniewska. Uh, so yes, all the best luck to all the teams and, and fingers crossed for ReactorX. I'm leaving uh, ReactorX in very safe hands of Ula, so I can sleep very, very well. <laughs> so yeah, fingers crossed everyone. Thank you, Agata. Uh, thank you for what you did for Dr. X. Thank you for your warm uh, words uh, and good luck for uh, everything, uh, all the new projects that you uh, start. Okay, so uh, it's been already 10th batch of the Reactor X, uh, five years of consecutive uh, acceleration of the, uh, of the startups. And we thought that it's a, a good moment for a self-reflection. Um, I jumped, I, I joined ReactorX quite recently and I was asked to observe the program a bit and talk to people. Uh, so I did talk to mentors, I talked to startups, I talked to some uh, members of our community and it turned out that actually uh, ReactorX is a really cool venture. Um, it has a solid reputation, uh, well-known brand, uh, great opinions uh, within the community, uh, within uh, both from mentors and uh, from startups. Uh, and uh, during those five years, a uh, very strong network of mentors was developed. So, and I mean the mentors who are really close to the to the market, uh, startups, investors. Uh, so that matters a lot and that changes everything and there is always a large community uh happy to help so uh, so that's good mm. but on the other hand there are some challenges uh, on the market so the first one is that the market got really crowded lately so with all the public money the, um, there are plenty of accelerators right now and if you're from outside the industry it's sometimes even difficult to say what's the difference between the offer of the uh, accelerators. Um, and also with the global pandemics, uh, many programs are online. Uh, our program is online as well. Uh, so we have to compete with global on online accelerators. Mm. So it all you know, changed. And we are thinking uh, about the unique value proposition of Reactor X. And we thought that the that it's not very precise anymore. Uh, and we don't want to be just yet another accelerator. Uh, we want to maximize our advantages to create something meaningful and stand out from the crowd. So we present our uh, new idea for Raktor X. Oops. Why is in moving the right direction, Reactor X DAO. Um, for those who know blockchain technology a bit, you probably already know what we want to do. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, I will try to um, uh, explain it shortly. Uh, so what's so special about the Reactor X DAO? It will bring back the power um, to community who actually built startups and support them. Uh, so basically by using blockchain technology, we will use, we'll introduce that digital currency, a token. So the more you do uh, for the DAO, the more tokens you own, the more tokens you own, the stronger your voice. So actually you can influence uh, important decisions like uh, who gets allowed to the program or who gets funding or even uh, who is going to be a mentor uh, for the next batch. And uh, with building DAO, we can put some boundaries uh, to the community. So uh, it's more exclusive and you can say who is within the community and who is not. Um, and I think that we have uh, such an exceptional talent pool in Poland uh, and in C region in general. Um, 
And I'm not talking only about the engineers, but also about uh, people that already built their startups, exited, uh, and want to share knowledge. Um, and with all the interest from international community uh, in our um, local um, startup ecosystem, I think that we, as a community, uh, we should um, monetize on that. So what exactly will you be able to do uh, for Rack to Excel? So if you're a mentor, um, when you give consultancy hours or you're a lead mentor, uh, then you get tokens for that. Uh, and the more engaged you are, the more tokens you have. So, so then you can impact uh, and influence the important decisions. Uh, about the startups, um, yeah, when you get you when you're accepted, when you're allowed to join DAO, you you will have to um, give away some shares, but you get tokens uh, for it. That's the first one. But uh, what's more important is that uh, you get a constant support from a DAO because it's just in the best interest of everyone. So uh, the better you do, the more money DAO makes on the exit. So that's why everyone is supporting. Um, if you're an investor, it was uh, it will work similarly to being an LP in the VC fund. So the more you invest, uh, the more tokens you'll get. Uh, but there is a, a big risk mitigation, um, especially if you invest uh, uh, in a pre-seed stage. Uh, so, so when you invest in DAO, you invest in uh, pre-screened, uh, trained, uh, and constantly supported uh, projects. You, so you can actually, uh, and you can support them as well, but you, you can make sure that this is really uh, good quality. And that's great sourcing uh, place uh, as well. Um, if you're a, a community member, uh, you first uh, will have to buy into the DAO, but then by uh, saving, um, you know, by giving your time uh, supporting DAO in, in a way that you can support, for example, um, engaging in some um, event or um, or any consultancy ad hoc consultancy, you get uh, tokens for that as well. So that means that everyone who actually is engaged will uh, get tokens and will earn on uh, DAO. So that's the general idea. It's it's more the idea stage than uh, than something ready. Uh, so now is the moment when Reactor X DAO will go through Reactor X Accelerator program. <laughs> so we we are starting a consultancy uh, with uh, we are consulting the project with uh, our mentors. Um, there are many issues uh, to be addressed: legal, technical. Uh, about the business model, uh, financing. So, so uh, we obviously have some uh, ideas here, but it has to be um, uh, discussed yet. Uh, so we build a really sustainable business model. So uh, I hope that you're at least a little bit curious uh, how it uh, all goes. Uh, if you are, please leave us an email. And uh, now in the in the comments in the chat, you should you should see links uh, to a new form. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can say what you what you think about the uh, DAO uh, project and um, and leave your email. Okay, so that's uh, it. And now we move to what's really important for everyone, meaning uh, the uh, we go back to our startups and the audience awards. So let me see how is the uh, so how is the um, uh, voting doing? Just a second. Mm. Sorry, I have to stop sharing my screen, I guess. Okay. Um, all right. So we have
Um, all right, so now I know who is the winner, sorry for the, uh, <laughs> for, for, for this moment and of hesitance. So the winner of the audience award of the 10th batch uh, of Reactor X is Tulkamp. Congrats, guys. Well done. Okay, would you like to comment quickly? Oh my gosh, we are overwhelmed. I guess uh, we are, of course, uh, distributed in many, many cities in Poland, but I, I can see on Slack that it's going crazy. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all the, all, all the audience. And I'm really happy because I know that we are we are going to make your work and life easier with Toolcam. So stay tuned. Uh, and as soon as we launch our MVP, we'll uh, invite you to, to test it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, congrats. That was uh, really well done. 40% uh, of 36% of uh, all the votes went to uh, to Toolcamp, and uh, the runner up is Donate Wise with almost 23% uh, of all the um, uh, votes. Uh, okay, and now we're waiting for our uh, jury members. Uh, the breakout room should close in six seconds. And they will come with the uh, with the decision. Okay, do we have a jury with us again? You need one more minute. <laughs> oh no, okay. Uh, one more minute in the breakout room again. Yeah. So, you know, just to increase the, the tension. All right, all right, all right. All right, so... Yeah. They are in the in the uh, breakout room again. So, uh, oh my God! So, um, who wants to say something? Tulkamp. <laughs> As a, uh, you got a, an award, uh, audience award. That's uh, that is really great. But I actually, I has to, I have to say that uh, it was. Um, I was amazed by by your performance today, and it's I, I would say that was definitely the best pitching session that we had during the whole program. So, guys, I'm I'm so proud of you. We launched today a new website, uh, and uh, it's already like uh, I don't know, like twenty five uh, people there. It's quite nice. Yes, so it was visited twenty five times since the launch uh, of the new website today. So. Pretty well. Good job. So I hope it's going to start kick up uh, kick off now, and uh, and uh, more and more people will uh, come. So we see that the jury is really busy, and I told them that they were supposed to be uh, quick, but um, okay. Tried our best. You know. Good job. Good job, Mihal. Good to see you here. So, do you have the decision ready? Sure. So, so uh, as you as you said, it was a bit. It took a bit longer than anticipated. Uh, it was quite a competitive, well, competition. <laughs> uh, but so, but, but ultimately, we, we reached an, uh, a, a common conclusion. So, with the jury committee, we would like to distinguish three three companies in this tenth, if I recall well, uh, reactor batch. Uh, so, so the we, we want to distinguish two runner-ups in, in form of music's label and Sangert, and uh, the winner picked by this jury is Donut Wise. Wow, congrats. good job, guys. Actually, uh, congrats to all three projects. Uh, very good, thank you. Do we have some reactions here like, yeah. <laughs> Confetti. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Confetti or something. Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I put confetti. You have to put on your screen. But it's all, okay, I see clapping. Great. Okay, so uh, two runners up. So let's, but let's start with the winners. Good job, guys. Uh, very well done. Uh, donate wise. Uh, so we're waiting for your comments. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys. Um, and I think, you know, all the really hard work has paid off. Okay. And I have to say the competition was fierce, right? So um, it was it was great to, to be with you on this batch. Uh, big thanks to Reactor X, obviously, 
uh, all the mentors and you, Ula, especially being here with us and you know, guiding us through the process. And uh, yeah, I wish you all guys you know, all the best in your future adventures. And you know, see, let's see what the future brings. All right. Yeah, cool. Good job. Good job, guys. Uh, Kasia from Sungrid or Arthur from Music Label, you guys are runner ups. Uh, so that's uh, maybe we'll give you a. Yeah, uh, so thank you. Um, I can start. Thank you very much. As, uh, as Piotr said, um, it was pleasure for me. <laughs> and I didn't expect that. Uh, it was a surprise for me. And uh, thank you, all the mentors, and uh, for all trainings and uh, you are doing very good, good work. Um, so yeah, thanks. Thanks and uh, congratulations uh, for all participant participants. And uh, I believe that your startups will develop amazingly. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you, Kasia. Arthur? Yeah, from, at the very beginning, congrats for the winners. Very nice, I would say, uh, project in ID and so on and so on. I would like to thank you to be on the, on the second place. Uh, you can see by looking at me, we believe it highly. We know that we're going to succeed. And just I would like to ask you to keep your fingers crossed because uh, uh, guitar is fun. Good. Yeah. Okay. I am your, I am, I am your uh, future client, definitely. Because I'm playing the guitar, so Arthur. <laughs> soon, soon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it Good. is a great idea. I, I, I enjoy that. Good job, thank you guys. Once again for all the program, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. That was actually a pure pleasure to to have you guys in the program. I um I have to say uh, that everyone was very much engaged, and I and actually not, not only myself, but everyone saw your hard work. So, uh, so that's where the progress uh, came from, and uh, we are very happy. We are keeping our fingers crossed for all of you and we're going to support you as much as we uh, can so thank you very much for uh, for the session thank you i'm now talking to the audience uh, on both um, channels so here on zoom but also on youtube um, uh, thank you for being us uh, for being with us uh, today um, and i hope that you like the dao idea uh, a little bit and that you're gonna leave us your email and we're gonna stay in touch so thank you for today and uh, see you on our next events bye bye Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.